Today's event was a prayer service and sermon from an imam. Held on a tarp outside in the drizzly conditions, a much quieter event than the protests of Monday or last Wednesday. Today we had just now a prayer on the lawn. It's Friday prayers, so uh, Muslims gather. Jenna Homsi is a student of Palestinian descent who says the protests of the last couple of weeks have taken up much of her attention. I'm so blessed to be done with classes. Um, I'm, I'm really, I don't know how other people are doing it. Um, alone, I feel as if this is not the kind of pressure that anybody can sustain. Ron Chana is also a member of the Palestine Solidarity Committee, an organization reportedly banned from campus, but they have held several events on the 40 acres this week. I think what we've seen in the past few days have definitely been um, scare tactics and ways to kind of like intimidate the students um, to let their voice or even their presence. We observed a small police presence made up of officers from UTPD. Unlike Monday, we did not see any Texas DPS troopers near today's event. After the prayer service, the pro-Palestine group Jewish Voice for Peace was scheduled to begin a teach-in, although not as many people stayed. Even as today's event was quieter, Palestine supporters say they're not done speaking up. There is a rally planned for Sunday at noon at the tower, and supporters say more in the future. So um, there is a lot of, you know, worry about, like, losing momentum at the end of the school year. Um, but I really do believe that this... Um, energy and momentum isn't really going anywhere, that we will continue to have protests. What brings you here today? To support the Jewish students at UT who fight anti-Semitism. No room for hate in the Lone Star State. Sunday's no Walk of Solidarity came on the heels of several University of Texas at Austin pro-Palestine protests, where 136 people in total were arrested. Organizers of the walk say that the pro-Palestine rallies have not been as peaceful as demonstrators claim. Nothing was peaceful about them. We have Jewish students that got threats for their life. They told them, go back to Poland, go back to Germany, which is referring to the Holocaust. People followed them. They drove the swastikas. Many at the walk say the rhetoric at those pro-Palestine protests has been hateful, putting fear in Jewish students. There's a lot of vulnerability on campus right now for the kind of slogans they're hearing and the kind of verbal attacks that they're getting on campus. It's, it's really a time that they need to know that we support them as a greater community. Jack Bevanisti is graduating high school this year and off to college at Virginia Tech next year. He says seeing what has been going on at university campuses around the country worries him. I wanted to feel protected on campus. I didn't want to have people block me from getting into classes, being harassed, walking from class to class. Like, you know, have people in my dorm who could hate me for just my religion or what I support. So I'm here to show support for, you know, other Jewish students in the U.S. UT Jewish students we spoke to Sunday say they've personally experienced harassment at the rallies. If you're shouting in my face, even if it's horrible things, you know, that's fine. But when you spit at me, which happened twice on the first day, and when you tell me to go back to Poland, which happened on the first day, um, like, now you're... In the first example, definitely crossing in the conduct, and that's a problem. In the second example, pretty hateful. The Jewish walk, compared to what we've seen these past few weeks on campus, were night and day. DPS troopers were visible, but almost seemed to be helping attendees. And while several pro-Palestine demonstrators have condemned the heavy police presence at the protest, for Jewish students, it was almost a comfort. There were some pros and cons to having the, the, that heavy presence there. Um, one of the pros was just us being safe. One week before graduation at the University of Texas, students and police kept a watchful eye on each other during this pro-Palestine protest. Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Several hundred students and faculty rallied on UT's South Lawn, not far from dozens of law enforcement officers who were ready to intervene if university rules were broken. But today was not a repeat of two earlier protests that sent 136 students to jail. We support your right to protest! We support your right to protest! A few dozen UT faculty and staff say they joined with protesters today to make them feel less vulnerable. 
Everyone's a little nervous right now. Assistant Professor Anna Short says with such a strong police presence on campus, students and staff need reassurance that their right to assemble will be protected. I think we are all hoping for a, a peaceful end to today, a peaceful end to the week, a peaceful end to the semester. And when I keep my brain on that, that we all have the same ends for peace, I feel a little bit less fear. Not everyone who gathered on campus today is affiliated with the university or from Austin. Two Dallas doctors who just returned from Gaza say they came here to be inspired by the student movement. When we're in Gaza to help individual patients, we can hopefully have an impact on that patient. But to have like a larger impact to hopefully end the, the suffering that they're experiencing, it's gonna take the voices of, of everyone. I think these are kids that are standing up for humanity. Tomorrow is the last day of finals and then graduation ceremonies start. It's still unclear what possible action the university might take against students who were arrested last week during pro-Palestine protest. Betty Cross, CBS Austin News. About 100 students called on Greg Abbott Sunday. Hoping that him and President Jay Hartzell of the University of Texas at Austin will hear their demands. That's our demand. Uh, we want to stop funding genocide. Students across the U.S. have called on their schools to divest from weapon manufacturers, supplying weapons in the Israel-Hamas war. But Governor Greg Abbott took to X Sunday afternoon to make it clear that, quote, will never happen. Greg Abbott, frankly, is not representing the community anymore. I don't know if he ever was. We are making it absolutely clear to Governor Abbott. We're making it absolutely clear to the university here. UT students and staff and faculty refuse, refuse to deal in the blood of Palestinians any longer. Governor Abbott's ex post continued to read, the university and state will continue using law enforcement tools to quickly end illegal protests on campus that violate state laws and school policies. That was made clear at Sunday's protest when dozens of DPS troopers surrounded UT on foot, horse and motorcycle. Police are sent here intentionally by Jay Hartzell, by the Governor Abbott to intimidate students out of using their First Amendment right to speak on this campus. Just a week ago, UT officials told CBS Austin the heavy police presence is requested to control mass crowds, especially after officers confiscated numerous weapons from protesters at previous demonstrations. The Palestine Solidarity Committee says despite the governor's remarks, they'll continue protesting. Regardless of, you know, his threats right to the community, um, the people here uh, have demands. The people here are upset. Um, we want to see a liberated Palestine. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and get the latest news by downloading the CBS Austin News app.